Welcome to the solution of round seven of Power BI practice. Now this week is about conditional formatting. Probably most of you thought that oh, it's gonna be an easy challenge. However, it's probably more difficult than you initially thought. Now let's have a look how I solved it. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if you're looking for ways to improve your Power BI skills and looking for some exercises and challenges to solve, then you're at the right place. Then make sure to hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Now, for this challenge, we have a data set that contains price information for different commodities over time for different countries. Let's have a look at the table visualization that we're trying to build. So, here we have on the rows, we already have the country and the different cities. And here at the top in the columns, we have the year and the month field. Then here, we also have two slices on a page, one for country and one for the commodity. And there is currently a filter on the country Armenia and commodity carrots. Now let's also have a look at the filter section where I placed the filter on the year 2060. Now let's start off by adding price to the table. Now, if we then go to the price field, then you see we are currently taking the sum. Now let's switch to an average. Now you see that when we switch to the average price, there doesn't seem to be a difference in this case. And that's because there's only one price per month for each commodity and city. Okay, so to make this table a little bit easier to read, we want to highlight the highest value and the lowest value. And we want to do this city by city. So row by row. Now let's get started and write our measure. So let's start by naming our measure conditional formatting max. And what we're gonna do here is first come up with the general structure and then get closer and closer to the end result that we are looking for. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna create a variable. So I'm gonna start with var. And in this variable, I want to store the current price. So over here in our table, we want to take each price and see if it is equal to the maximum. So let's call this one then price and this is going to be equal to and we can use a function like selected value which returns the value when there's only one value in the specified column otherwise returns the alternate result okay so here we want to check if there's only one value for the price and now we want to compare all of those prices to the maximum so let's create another variable for the max price and over here, I could use a function like max. And I want to take the maximum of the price. So now that we have these two variables set up, now it's time to compare them. Okay, so we can create another variable for the result. And here, let's write an if statement. So if, and then the price equals the max price then I want to return the color red. Okay, and otherwise nothing. Okay, so we just specify what needs to be returned when it's true. Okay, now let's end our st statement there and then return the result. So now we can use that measure for our conditional formatting. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the format tab for my visualization and then let's go here to conditional formatting. And I want to base it on the average price and it's going to be applied to the background color. So let's turn it on and let's go to advanced controls. Now here we choose not color scale, but field value. And this field value is going to be our measure. Let's click OK. You see now everything is red. Now, why is this? Now let's have a closer look at our formula again. So I'm going to go back to my measure. So everything is red. So that means that this condition is true for every value that I'm seeing here. So the price equals the max price. Now, why is this? Now let's have a look at the filter context. So for example, here this 275, that is for the city Amavir, January. Country is Armenia, commodity is carrots. Okay, now let's put these filters in place on our data set so that you can see exactly how that filter then looks like. Now we have the city Armavir. 
Then we are looking at the commodity carrots. And as a date, we have January 2016. I see that there's only one row that gets returned in this filter, which has a price of 275. So when we take the maximum of that column price, well, that returns 275. And the selected value in that filter context is also 275. And therefore, we have true for every value that we see in this visualization. So how can we change that now? Let's go back to the measure. And we have to make a change to the calculation for the maximum price. Okay. Now, what do we need to change? The filter context. Okay, because we want to remove the filter so that it looks for the maximum throughout the whole table. Okay, so I'm going to put this on a new line and I'm going to wrap it inside of a calculate function, which allows me to modify the filter context. Okay, so now the expression stays max food prices, price column. So now for the second argument, we're going to remove the filter on our table. Okay, so this we can do with an all function or all selected function. Now with all selected, you still respect the filters that are coming from outside of the table visual. So for the country, commodity, and the year. Okay, so therefore I'm gonna go for all selected. And here I want to remove the filter on a table, food prices. Let's close that those brackets. Let's close the calculate function as well. And let's see what it returns. Now you see that we only have one red value and that's the 510 which is the highest value that we can see for this visual okay still not exactly what we want because we wanted to look row by row but we are one step closer so how can we now change our measure now let's go back again now the problem here is the table from which i'm removing the filter and this is food prices so it removes all of the filters I'm going to replace food, food prices with dim date. You see now it highlights the highest prices row by row because we only remove the filter from the date table, but we keep the filter context for the cities. So how can I now adjust it so that it also highlights the minimum? Very easy. Let's go back. I'm going to update the name to conditional formatting max and min. And now we also need another variable here that gives me the minimum price. So I'm going to say min, a variable for min price. And this is going to be equal to. And here we can just copy paste the code from above there and replace it with min. Now I could nest another if function in there. However, I think it's a little bit cleaner if we use a switch function and then say true. And then we can first see if the price is equal to the maximum price. Then we want to return the color red. And we can then also check if the price equals the min price. Then we would like to return the color green. Now, instead of writing red or green, you can also put in hex codes to get exactly the colors that you're looking for. So here for the red, we could type in this. And then for the green, another hex code. And you see that looks a little bit prettier. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the filter that we have for the year. And you see that it seems to still be highlighting the same values. However, now, we have the years 2015, 16, and 17. So it's more coincidence that this is the case. Now, what we want to do, want to do now is change the formula so that it looks year by year for the highest and lowest price. Now, in a measure, we are removing every time the filter from the date table. So that means it looks for the maximum or the minimum city by city, but for all of the years, 2015, 16, and 17. And we need to adjust that so that it looks city by city, but also year by year. So here, instead of removing the filter from the whole date table, we need to remove it only from the month. Okay. So let's take over here the month and let's do the same for the minimum. Okay. So over here, I'm just going to copy that over, replace them date with them date month. And this result might surprise you a little bit. And that's because the month column 
is sorted by the amount of number column. So when we remove over here the filter from the month, we also need to remove it at the same time from the month number. Okay, so let's make that adjustment. So you see, with just a little adjustment, we now have our formula working row by row, but also year by year. So you see, it's probably a little bit harder than you initially expected to be. However, it gives you full flexibility to do whatever you want. I hope that you have liked this challenge and that you're able to take the concept from this challenge and apply it to your situations. Now, of course, if you have any other interesting applications for conditional formatting or anything that's related to it, let us know in the comment section below and I hope to see you in the next challenge.